Greetings everyone, it's Professor Fiore. In this video, we are going to talk about the analog switch. So what is an analog switch? Everybody's familiar with a mechanical switch, right? Well, an analog switch is basically the electronic, in other words, transistorized version of that. What are the advantages? First of all, it has no moving parts compared to a mechanical switch, meaning it doesn't really wear out. You don't have to worry about that. It has the potential for clickless switching. So if, for example, in an audio system, if you're not careful with the way the switch is configured, you can get little pops when you switch something on and off. You get a little click, right? That's not going to happen with the analog switch. The analog switch is physically small. It's compact. It can fit into little spaces, right? It's a nice little device. You can put several of them in one integrated circuit. And here's a really big one. It can be thrown programmatically, meaning you can turn it on and off, not just by a human flicking their finger up and down or in and out, but rather through some device like a microcontroller. This thing can be programmed to be turned on and off. That's a huge, huge advantage. Now, you can buy analog switches in integrated circuit form, already set for you. What I want to do in this video is show you basically how they work, what's inside there. All right, so we begin with a basic JFET. Now, the thing to remember about the JFET, if you haven't looked at the voltage controlled resistor video that I've done, take a look at that because that explains really what we're doing here. And that is if we keep the input signal relatively small, and as you can see over here, I've just got 50 millivolts. I can get the resistor to operate in what's called, excuse me, the FET to operate in what is called an ohmic region. In other words, it behaves like a resistor. If the control voltage, which is the gate source voltage, if I set this to zero, I get maximum current through here, which gives me the minimum value of RDS, something called RDS on that you would see on a data sheet. Depending on the FET, that might be tens of ohms, it might be hundreds of ohms, but it's a relatively small value. When I set the gate source voltage, the control voltage, to VGS off, or actually beyond VGS off, that turns off the FET, meaning its RDS value goes to some huge value, mega ohms. Right? So what I do is I simply create a divider between this resistor over here and the FET. My load is sitting out here. So I'm just going to switch this on and off to these two extremes, right? So at zero volts for my control, which is what I have set up right now, the load ideally would be zero volts, right? Because this is in maximum conduction. All I'm getting is the RDS on. Now, in reality, you're going to get a divider between RDS on and this R1. So are you really going to see zero? No, you're going to see some little residual of the signal. On the other extreme, right, when I take via control beyond VGS off, and I, in my case, I'm going to be using 10 volts, the J111 VGS off is uh, minus four and change. So this will definitely put us in the off state. Ideally, V load will equal V in, because right, this will be a really high resistance. And all you get is a divider between, again, R1 and R load. R load being 10 times bigger than R1, right? So am I going to see exactly uh, the 50? No, I'm going to lose a little bit here, but this is the idealization, right? You're just going through these two extremes, All right? So let's see what happens. Okay, now I'm not going to draw the excitation here because as you're going to see, the, the signal at the output might be pretty small and compared to the input, it's going to be hard to... to see what's going on to scale these. So I'm going to leave the excitation off. We know the input is 50 millivolts. So all we're going to do is look at the output. All right. All right, we can see this is pretty small. You know, it's not zero, but it's nowhere near 50 millivolts. You know, we're looking at the, oh, you know, a little over 200 microvolts maybe. 221, if you want to call it that, microvolts, okay, for our 50 millivolt input. So that's pretty much squashing the 
the input signal. Now, if I go to the other extreme, so I'll put my max control voltage here of 10 volts. So you can think of this as a logic, right? Logic zero, logic 10. If you're familiar with TTL, zero to five, but it's the same kind of idea, all right? Two logic states. Okay, now we can see that our output is nearly the size of the input. 50 millivolt input, we're just shy of that. Okay, and we're getting 45, which would make sense because really we're getting a divider between the 10K and the 100K. All right, so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, you know, that's okay. It's not perfect. I mean, what if my load is small? You know, what if my load is just a few K ohms? I'm not going to get 90% of the signal, right? I'm going to have a divider with this 10K. And if I try to make the 10K smaller, then the amount of loss that I get with... The JFET isn't going to be good. In other words, instead of seeing, you know, a couple of hundred microvolts out here, I'm going to maybe be seeing millivolts, maybe several percent of my input. So it's a place to start, right? But it's not perfect. It's not wonderful. How do I improve this? Well, you improve this by cascading. And the easy thing to do here is to make a pi or t configuration. In other words, we have in this sort of vertical version. We can also make a uh, sort of a horizontal version, right? I'll use three FETs over here to do that. So here's an improved variation. So here's the original. And what I've done is I've added sort of a clone of it over here and one in this sort of horizontal configuration. So it's sort of a multiple pad, if you will, a multiple voltage divider that's going on. Now, the important thing here is that the control voltage that's sent to these two, right, T1 and T3, the, the uh, sort of vertical orientation, is opposite of the control voltage that's being sent to T2, the one that's in the horizontal position. So you can think of this as perhaps being a large resistance, a large resistance, and a small resistance. So you can see you have cascaded voltage dividers. Notice also that that R1 I've dropped from 10K to 50 ohms, just... 50 ohms. That's it. Okay. Why? Because we're going to get a lot of loss in this multiple FET configuration. Now I've thrown this one meg. You might have one, been wondering, hey, why do you got that one meg in there? Is that really needed? Uh, I just threw this in there as a safety valve. If you decide to breadboard this, right? Um, and in case you put this voltage on backwards, you would blow up this FET because you'd forward bias this junction and there'd be nothing to limit the current. So I just put that in there. Theoretically, you don't really need that resistor and it's not going to make any bias difference because, you know, the, the gate current is so small that drop across this is negligible. I didn't even stick it on this middle fat just because I didn't have enough room. But so that doesn't really need to be there, right? Just kind of be trying to be a little bit on the safer side if you want to breadboard it in any case. So here's what should happen, right? I've got my control voltage at 10, so that's on T1 and T3, right? That's going to open these guys, right? These transistors are going to be opens. So big resistance, big resistance. Meanwhile, I'm going to have zero on T2. So that should give us shorted switch, all right? This is what we saw with the original, okay, what V load is and, you know, V load zero, V load is VN, same sort of thing, all right? I am referring to this control. I'm not referring, referring to V control number two, right? V, whatever V control is, V control two is the opposite. When this is 10, this is zero. When this is zero, this guy's 10, all right? I want to be really clear about that. You never have 10 on all of them or zero on all of them. They have to be opposite of each other because whenever this is a large resistance, you want this one to be a small resistance and vice versa. So, 10 volts, big resistance, big resistance, small resistance. So what's, what's happening here is you're allowing the signal through, right? You got a 50 and a big resistance. This could be mega ohms. So this voltage is going to be virtually what the input is. You go through it again, right? So you got a small resistance and a big resistance. You're going to get virtually what you put in out here at V load. When you flip it, when this is zero, right, when these two are zero, they're conducting like mad. So you've got small resistance, small resistance, and this thing is going to be at 10. So it's 
really big. So we're going to see a loss here. We're going to see a loss here. A loss and a loss is going to give us a whole bunch of loss. And here we are at VLOAD. All right, so let's see what we get. Does this work better than our simple single stage version? Now, uh, again, I'm not going to draw the excitation here because we know that's 50 millivolts. I just want to see what's at the output. Okay, so here's my output. Look, 50 millivolts right on the money. So instead of getting 45 like we did before, you know, we're getting 50. And you could play with this, right? You could put in smaller values of our load and it'll still work pretty well. Okay, now let's turn around and change these. We're going to flip these to the opposite logic, right? So zero volts gate source for T1 and T3. And then for the middle transistor, we'll pop that one up to 10. So this should produce a lot of loss. Now, remember when we did the original one, you know, our loss was down here at, you know, maybe a couple of hundred microvolts is what got through. Okay, let's see what happens now. All right, so here's our output. Oh, look, it's nanovolts. It's just a little over a nanovolt. Seriously, nanovolts compared to 50 millivolts? Yeah, I would say without a doubt, this is much, much more effective than the simple single FET version. Okay, so you can see exactly how this is working. It's really an ohmic region sort of thing you're uh, producing this voltage divider effect between these devices. We either have it as huge resistance or tiny resistance. And of course, we'll use FETs specifically designed for very small RDS on values, right? And there we go. And we have our nice analog switch. So no moving parts. This thing can be switched on and on and off at really, really high rates. Now you could be switching this thing on and off on and off at 100 kilohertz and megahertz. How fast are the FETs? Okay, you could never do that with a mechanical switch. It could be um, thrown programmatically from a distance, so to speak, right? In other words, all you have to do is run the control wires, okay? Just run the control wires. You don't actually have to have the FETs where the physical switch is, okay? Um, or would have been, I should say. So we've got clickless switching, long lifespan, you know, small size we have all of these nice things right nice device just a couple of jfets that's really all it boils down to a few jfets beautiful we can also do this with mosfets but you can see exactly how it works now right you might try um breadboarding one of these things right in the um lab manual the accompanying lab manual there is a lab on this there is an exercise on this and you can try starting off with this and if you're really motivated, you know, you might do something like this. Okay. All right. Questions, put them down in the comments. Take care. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.